Hey everyone, it's Colin with Legalized Mystery Productions. Thank you for joining me and welcome. Today I'm going to be doing another grayscale tutorial, this time on a Primaris Redemptor Dreadnought. And what I'm going to be demonstrating today is going to be a technique called panel modulation highlighting, and, or just panel modulation in general. And what panel modulation is, it's a way of doing the lights and the highlights on the model where you're accentuating the shapes of the different panels and you're exaggerating the lighting a little bit. It's not an overall like natural light. It's a concerted effort to focus in on each panel and, and accentuate the lighting and accentuate the shape of that panel to where um, you get a very, it does look natural, but it's a more visually interesting look than if I were to just say, okay, well the top half of this model is light and then the undersides are dark, and then, you know, it's it's more nuanced than that, and it does give uh, a really cool look. So I'm going to be going over that today, uh, just using grayscale. I'm not going to be using any color recipes or anything, so um, let's get started. So first things first, uh, you know, primer, and then conceptually what we're going to be doing is we're going to lighten the outside of these top panels here. We're going to airbrush here. So after I do the airbrushing and I do the panel modulation, I'm also going to go through and do kind of the edge highlights and show what those do for the panel modulation, um, just like I did with the, with the Space Marine tutorial. So um, we're going to start by highlighting the top. And when we do that, we want it to have a more natural Look, so we're going to be highlighting kind of the outside of these panels. Uh, we're going to leave these, this middle area here dark. And then we'll come back and we'll be highlighting the top of the, the back of the exhaust here. So like the center part of the model, like right here, is going to remain dark. Everything else will be highlighted. The key to panel modulation, one of the keys to panel modulation, is you want to keep, in general, you want to keep the light edges next to dark edges. So like this front panel, we're not gonna highlight the top. We're gonna highlight the bottom of this front panel, the bottom two thirds of this panel. And then we're gonna highlight the bottom of this panel. And it may not make a whole lot of sense, then, but then we're gonna come back and we're gonna do the bottom here and a little bit touching. So like when you lighten the bottom of here, that's showing the, the light really reflecting off the ground and highlighting kind of up. Same thing uh, coming down into the other parts of the model. Um, like this will be lighter on the bottom here. It's a little counterintuitive, but you'll see, you'll see how it works. You'll see what I mean uh, as we get going. So one of the things uh, that we'll need for panel modulation is you do want to get like crisp lines and I'll show you how to do that using just the angles of the model again, uh, like I've done uh, in other tutorials. So just how we turn the model like in the Leviathan Dreadnought, for example. Um, we're going to be able to get away with a lot without masking at all. But if we do need to mask, we're going to take, these are just a uh, poster card. You can use old business cards is usually what I use, but I don't have any more. Um, but this is just actually, I think this is a scrapbooking paper for my wife. Um, we just use these, cut these into little scraps, try and get a straight line as you can on one side. They don't have to be perfectly sized or anything. But these we're going to use to do basically quick masking. Like that, we're going to hold it up like that and spray, and then just move the card, and it'll do the masking for us. It keeps us from having to fool around with tape too much. So that's a plus. We do not want to be spending forever taping each panel when we're doing panel modulation. It would just take way too long. So. I'm going to use a dark gray, black gray from Voyo model color. Again, colors are not, unless you want to do like a gray army, then, you know, go nuts. Um, but this is just a really nice, rich, uh, dark, 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 dark gray. And this is actually how I paint my black too, is with this, is with this black gray. So first things first, so we're going to start at the top. And I, and I always start at the top with panel modulation because that's 
that's the most important thing. It's a flat surface usually. It's the most important area to, to get the most natural. So you want these outside panels, and then you can you can cascade off those panels down the rest of the model. Um, so for here, like we're gonna take. And again, just using the, we're just spraying out. We're spraying out this way over the model, over that edge. And so the paint's gonna, the paint's gonna hit that edge and then it's gonna just dissipate as it goes over. And we still have a nice clean line on the front of that dreadnought. There's no overspray, we're spraying very lightly. But we still have a nice clean line there. Same thing on this side. And this is the uh, easy to build redemptor. That's why the arms are all kind of wiggling around. But that's okay. We get the top of that shoulder. That's fine. And then we'll come back to the back here and just kind of get the outside of the outside of the exhaust there. And a little bit on this top piece there. Perfect. So happy with that. It is spattering a little bit, but because it's a grayscale tutorial, I'm not too I'm not too fussed as this is mostly theoretical. So we're not looking for like a perfect perfect finish. But that being said, do a professional pride. So so here what we're going to do is move on to these front panels, and that's where we're going to use this card. So we're going to take this card. And oops, that's not a straight edge. There we go. We're going to hold the card. This takes some practice. I'm not going to lie. This takes a little bit of getting used to. We're going to hold the card on the bottom edge there. Highlight that panel and then move the card. And you see that bottom panel, it's right on that line. Then we're going to hit just the bottom of that panel there with the black gray. And I'm going to be doing three, three layers of, of highlights just to really show this technique. If I were painting this black, I would only, I would not be doing as many highlights. But because we're doing the grayscale, I, I do want to accentuate these panels. So you hold that there, take it away, boom. Easy peasy. And that took like three seconds instead of, you know, a couple minutes that it would take to do. Oh, come on do some masking so when you get to shapes oops when you get to shapes like these little missile pods on the front here on the chest those you're going to highlight a little bit more traditionally we're just going to do a little bit on the top there a little bit on the top there and then we can come in from the side and just get the front maybe front half of those that's going to be a more traditional highlight than you know panel modulation in those areas. Um, when we look at the top of the dreadnought, we're going to come down on top of the carapace. So again, on the outside of that little pilot housing there, and on the top of this front area. But that's going to leave a light there, which means we want it dark up at the top there. We don't want to do light next to light, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to turn this again and we're going to spray just like this straight down on top straight down on top like that and let the paint so you can see there we're just spraying straight down like that and what that does is it gives us that clean line look at that perfect wow love it that gives us a really really nice break between those two panels and we'll come down here and do a little bit now what we will do with panel modulation with when you're doing panel modulation like this 
I'm not going to bring this bottom panel up the highlights. I'm not going to bring that as high up as I am going to be this mid panel here. This is going to stay darker than this panel, but just highlighting it gives it more depth, gives it more interest. So that, but that's not, we're not going to highlight that all the way up and then have it look weird and be like, why is it so bright under there? There are going to be still be parts that are brighter than others. And we'll get, we'll get to that when we get to uh, the second layer of highlights. So out here, what we're going to do, see if I can get this kind of angled a little better. And then I can't really see under, well, I guess you will when we start highlighting, but can't really see under the leg here, but we're going to get, we're going to get this card under there and just do the outside of that like top hip panel there, you can see. And then since we're going to be painting that metallic anyway, we're not going to use the card. We're going to do the bottom part of this. And now those are going to be separated by that metallic. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in So we're going to come in and do, sorry, I'm thinking. So like this is a traditional highlight here, that light to dark underneath. This is reverse there. Oop, 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 oop. See, this is tough. there when the second layer of gray goes down it'll be even more evident that the panel modulation is going to be even more evident so on this knee we're going to come and do a more traditional kind of high highlight high on the knee make sure to get Kind of the insides at the top there and there Okay, because then on the toes, we're just going to go on the outside of the toes. We're not going to keep the toes very complicated. You do want to make sure to get the sides of the toes. And that shin plate is going to be largely, oops, there we go. That shin plate is going to be largely in shadow until you get around to the sides, obviously. But when we do get around to the sides, we want to keep, we want to keep that modulation going. We're going to do like the lower half of those legs because the top half and how this works theoretically, how it works is that the top half of these legs, just like on the Primaris leg. So you'll notice like the Primaris Marines, we did the same thing on the back of the leg. We highlighted this bottom two thirds because this top part is really going to be overshadowed. Now I can raise this up again a little bit. Oops. There we go. Ah, there we go. Finally. Okay. Now we're cooking. So the top part of this, this lower leg is going to be shad overshadowed. Like there you can see, that's actually a really good illustration. There you can see the shadow from the Dreadnought Carapace falling on the model right there. So this will be more visible and get more light than this area up here, which is going to be kind of under the carapace. So that's why it's counterintuitive until you start thinking about lights and shadows a little bit more. And then you go, huh, okay, so 
this is actually kind of buried underneath here. This sticks out a little more, which is why we're highlighting that. So, and it's also why we're highlighting the outside of the toe because the inside of the toe is going to be kind of closer to the body and underneath the shin. So all this stuff kind of works back on itself. Um, same thing here. We do a little gray on the outside and then the outside here, outside here. And then when it comes to the shoulders, we're going to start at the top. And that is going to be a more traditional highlight because this is separated by that metallic. We can kind of restart that modulation process on the shoulder. Uh, but when we get to the front, and we're spraying this, we're spraying away from us so that we get that hard edge right there. Same thing on the back, spraying away from the side. That was a little heavy handed, but you know, we're gonna leave it for our purposes today. Man, this, this black gray is really drying on the tip of my brush today. So sorry for continually pausing, but so top part of the shoulder, kind of an overall. And again, if this is angled down like that, maybe you concentrate more kind of up in the corner here, you know, depending, but I'd have this, I'm going to have this modeled fairly, fairly straight up and down. So, um, so we're going to leave it. We're going to leave it just like that. Uh, we got the little bit at the bottom of the fin guard there, but we don't want to travel. We don't want to do too much. So just like, just like this bottom panel here, oops. So just like this bottom panel here, we're not going to highlight up these shins, but we did want to add kind of that mid color in there. Uh, and then when it comes to the power, when the power fits, where we have those rounded, we have more rounded shapes on the power fist, we're going to do a more traditional highlight on the fist. So this is going to come just like we would say like the Space Marine shoulder pad where the shadow, this is going to rotate the sun, or the sun, the light is going to rotate down and then go to shadow on the bottom of the fist. Because uh, that just makes the most sense, right? Ooh. Okay. Because that just makes the most sense, right? For that to rotate down to black there. And then on the back, again, we're going to go a little bit at the bottom because the top of this is light, right? To establish that zone in the middle of the top of the dreadnought there. We got the outside, outside by the exhaust is light. So we want to keep this dark, but we do want to do a little, a little vertical highlight on those exhausts by those vents. We do want to do a little vertical just to accentuate that shape. Because that shape isn't really, you know, we want to accentuate the curvature of it this way. So we'll do a little a little vertical highlight on that kind of vent area. And then for this, we're just doing a traditional kind of top half of that thing. And then we'll do a little bit under there just to give it some color. Um, we'll come back and again, we're not going to necessarily hit that with the next round of highlights. So so far, you know, we have the first stage kind of highlight working. And now we're just going to move right on into our second step of highlighting. And this is just going to accentuate what we did the first time. This is just going to go And we'll just double down on on that first pass. And this is just Vallejo Vallejo model air gray.
see if I can salvage this real quick. Okay. There we go. Okay, so this is this is just gonna be a lighter gray. And then we're just gonna go back in the same order, we're just gonna do it all again. So but this time highlighting a little left. Trying to at least. Again, spraying in those angles so that we keep that line between the highlight and then the black portions. And again, we're going to come in with our card. that's showing up so we're just going to run through this real quick and then when I come back with the lightest gray I think that'll be that'll be the most striking so yeah, the top of the housing top of the carapace there uh, bottom of the exhaust bottom of the exhaust a little bit of vertical but not as much as last time maybe just two thirds Top of that, top of that there, and then the bottom portion of that shoulder, excuse me, the bottom portion of that shoulder, top half of that shoulder, bottom there, bottom there, top there, there we go. And then a little bit at the bottom, but we're not going off to the sides on this one as much. So top of the knee, top of the knee. And again, this is similar to the areas that we highlighted in the Primary Space Marine tutorial, which makes sense because they're both humanoid or hominid. Uh, figures. They have two legs, two arms. Oop, that is too far away. Gosh, I am just winging it too much on that one. Now, normally I just leave the, the arms off for painting, um, but I wanted to show how the whole thing worked together. So a little bit on the top of the knee. Don't forget to get the sides. And now just the outside. So we're going to leave the insides dark. And we're not going to... We're not going to, oh, excuse me. See, I almost forgot. Again, spraying straight away. Get that nice, get that nice line on the middle. Now you're really starting to see those panels come alive, right? And uh, I will be doing, a, I will do a tutorial with some color at some point for Redemptor because I have quite a few of them in the queue to paint both for me and for clients so there will be some redemptive painting dealing with actual colors but i wanted to get another grayscale out there i know i get asked about dreadnoughts a lot um so i wanted to get this one out for you and a little bit here on the kind of back power housing deal there I think that was everything. I think that was everything. Now with this second highlight, like on the shins, we are coming around, but we're gonna stop like right here, like right in this area here. We're not gonna carry that second highlight all the way to the front because we want those shins. Oh, forgot the toes. We want the shins to be dark right there because they're they're virtually, you know, they're folded over. They're virtually you know, perpendicular to the ground almost. So we don't want to bring those up super, super high. It would just look, it would look really unnatural. So now we're going to come in. This is Slanesh Gray from GW, and this is going to be like a really, this is going to be a really obvious highlight. Um, and again, I want to, I just want to accentuate and kind of go through it. Um, 
you know, a third time and just really show what I mean with the, with the panel modulation. So again, we're going to start in the same spot and that really helps me when I'm painting, um, especially when I'm painting like a group of models, if I'm batch painting, I always start at the same spot on each model and kind of work my way around in the same way. That way I have less of a chance of missing something or forgetting something. Um, and each time we go through this progression, we highlight a little less, right? So we're not, you know, you get the top of these, but that's okay. So that's a good example. Try that out. That's not what I want. You see how it's like circular? This highlight right here is like a circle. And that's because I just hit it with the airbrush. And I can just, just a little bit, just pull out a little bit and just give it a little misting to kind of fuzz the edges because I don't want these little circles of highlight. Um, and you'll also notice we're not highlighting the middle of these panels. We're doing, we're staying on the edges and we're accentuating, we're accentuating those shapes, right? And now we're not going to do that last highlight. We're not going to do that last highlight on this bottom panel here. We're going to leave that bottom panel in that kind of middle highlight area. We don't want to overdo it on that middle panel. And then here, since this will be pretty much straight up, what we want to follow. So when we're doing this highlight on the shoulder, A good rule of thumb, so like we, the gun is going to be horizontal to the ground, but the pad is like a little off. It's a little off center. What we want to do is we want to keep the highlight basically on a horizontal plane. We don't want to highlight just like the top half of this. We want to keep this last highlight on a horizontal plane because if the light's coming down, the light's going to fall kind of in this way. Unless we're like over exaggerated, that's just a different way of high, zenithal highlighting, which is like pick up or object source lighting, which is like you pick a, a place where the light's coming and go. Psh. But with just a, a, what they call a universal light, which is what we're doing, do you want to keep this highlight on a horizontal plane? So with the, basically with the gun or with the ground, because it's going to be pointed wherever. But in general, you want to keep these highlights on a horizontal plane. And that way, uh, it just looks more natural. It just it just gives it a better just gives it a better look. So we're gonna come and we're just gonna go horizontally on the top of that. And that looks good. A little bit on the bottom there, a little bit on the bottom there, not too much, but just enough. And now full disclosure, I probably should have come in and highlighted this back this back ridge area, like right, like right there. And I wouldn't do that. See, that's too much with the black from the black to the slanesh gray. That's too much. Um, I would have done it with the mid tone and I wouldn't have used the slanesh gray because it's too, it's too light, but we would have treated that back panel just like we treated, you know, this panel here where we did like the medium highlight and then kind of left it. So, just a little bit on the crotch, just to kind of show that it's there, but this thing's buried under the carapace as well. The knees, we're gonna to wanna to draw attention to. And then these panels here. Then we're gonna get our, we're gonna get our card back out. Oops, that's not a straight line. I'm gonna move that arm out of the way. So we'll get our card back out, hold it there, highlight, get this 
card over here. Highlight. Now you see we have that nice definition between those panels and that masking took no time at all. So I'm a big fan of techniques like that where we get a nice result, but it doesn't take. So here we go, just the top, top of the toes, kind of inside of that toe, outside of that toe, inside, outside. And then we do, we do want to get the outside of this one. We do want to touch that one a little bit, outside, outside. But this is very sparing, right? With the power fist, I'm going to get kind of the ends of the fingers, but this we want to, this is more zenithal. We do want to get like this right there, the knuckles kind of separately, and then we'll just do a general highlight on the fist like that. And that way the fist, that's more kind of vertically highlighting, and that will um, keep that rounded shape really nicely. So when we come back down to the shins, oh, excuse me, I forgot the, so on the fist, for example, this, this pad is basically horizontal. So we can just hit, whereas on the, on the gun, it was cocked a little So then when we come around the back to the shin plate, lower leg plate, we just want to get a little bit here. And we're not going far on the inside. We're going to leave the inside dark, but we are going to come out on the side a ways. And then just a little nod to that vertical shape right there. You kind of calf, kind of calf area. Just a little nod. We don't want to highlight that up too far. And then we can do the bottom of the shin here. And just a little right there. A little bit at the top of the Mechanicum Opus. Or the Opus Machina or whatever it's called. So bottom here, bottom here. Little nod to the vertical. Little nod to the vertical. And you can see it's a little more subtle. In a lot of ways, a little more subtle than the Thousand Sons Leviathan. The, the Thousand Sons Leviathan is really, really exaggerated to give it kind of like that mystical, that mystical look. Um, if you don't want to reverse the shading on the shoulder pad, because that can kind of throw some people off, you don't have to. You can just do the shoulder pad. The most important thing is the carapace of the of the dreadnought. I think it's a good look, so I do it, but. So now we've got all our, our panels base coated. Uh, the next step I would, you know, paint all the metallics and, and, you know, get into detailing and all that jazz, but that's not why we are here today. Uh, we are here to talk about highlights. But when we do the metallics, we're going to do kind of the same thing. So let me get... Oh my gosh. Let me get some metallics and then I'll just run through how we want to do that real quick. So like when we're painting, when we're painting the, you know, exhaust, these hoses, I mean, we're just doing a straight highlight. There are not really any tricks to, you know, when we paint this, we're just going to go Oops, I got a little loose with that, but that's okay. We're just going to go and, you know, base coat shade highlight the kind of detailing on the chest here. But when we come down, like to the legs especially, we're going to want to keep these metallic highlights like in this area because those are, you know, obvious, I guess you could say. But when we come in here, we're going to want to keep those metallic highlights on like the lower half. We're going to base coat the whole thing, wash it. But then we're really only going to highlight what we can see under the dreadnought. We don't need, so like here, we're just going to highlight 
kind of the front, maybe third of that joint right here. And the rest of this would be in shadow. And we're just going to leave that. And same here on this side, on this inside joint. We're going to highlight the top here, come around the front a little bit and make sure to hit that and really just leave it like that's fine. The rest of that is going to stay in shadow. When we come to the outside, now these are not in shadow, right? These are obvious on the outside of the dreadnought. So these we're going to do a more traditional kind of, you know, highlight there. Same thing here. Kind of boo boo boo, maybe even extend it a little more to get a nice, and then throw a little brighter silver just on the top of there. Coming around the back, you're gonna to wanna to keep these highlights on these parts kind of more in the middle because they're not gonna extend all the way back up here. That's gonna be in shadow. And then and it's not gonna curl back around underneath. That's also gonna be in shadow. So you just want to keep these highlights kind of in the middle and then you do want to touch on the inside on the legs there. So like inside, but again, those are very small spot highlights. I mean, that is not, um, that is, that is not going to be extensive highlighting under there. Most of the metallics on this model are going to stay in shadow on the lower part. So again, maybe like the middle half following the same line, on this part into the interior. We're going to follow that same line with the light. So if you imagine these highlights just transferring themselves over to this, we're going to highlight the same area on that. So same here. This maybe get a little higher because, you know, the gun arm isn't as isn't covering as much. Going to go there, and then we already did the outside there. So Basically, that's how you want to that's how you want to approach those metallics, and then on the gun, you know, you'll go obviously on the top, and so the gun we're going to do mo mostly like a universal light, and then come down the side a little bit, but not on the inside. We're not going to go we're not going to go crazy on the inside of the gun, just a little bit. We're going to highlight the top and kind of the lower, you know, top two thirds maybe and leave the lower third in shadow. And then when it comes to the joints here, you do want to, these are getting direct, direct light. So you do want to get a really good highlight on the top of these joints. And that helps. It also helps break up the panel on the model. Um, I would probably paint these metallic as well, depending on the scheme, right? You can leave those the body color. You can leave those metallic. Um, something like Ultramarines would probably leave it. Body color on like Iron Hands, I would probably paint it metallic just to just to mix it up, um, get some different shapes, different colors on there. So, but in general. That's where you want to keep those. And then we will highlight, because this is also serving a purpose of breaking up these panels, we will bring this highlight just a little bit down in between those panels to kind of complete that complete that process, right? So now we've done, you know, paint, 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 paint. That's all fine and good. And then now we're going to take this kind of concept of, lead edge highlighting and we're going to apply it to a model the size of a redemptor dreadnought so let me grab oh where's the light 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 here i thought i pulled it out there it is oh my gosh of waste. Okay. So this is going to be very contrasty. I mean, this is really, really, really going to show up again. You know, we're trying to accentuate these things in this tutorial. So what we're going to do is 
is hit this. And again, I'm using very thin paint. I'm using the side of my brush, maybe a third of the way down. I'm using the belly of the brush to do the highlighting because these are sharp panel lines. Now we're going to bring this down to about there because that's when this panel starts to duck behind this panel and that lighting isn't going to be as evident. Same thing here. We're going to dip back behind this panel a little bit, but not all the way. We're not going to highlight this thing all the way back into the shadow. It would just look a little off. So we are going to do the outside. Boom. And we are going to do the inside of this panel because it's higher than the interior of that panel, right? This panel is, is up higher, as you can see there, than the panel on the right. So we are going to highlight that one. We're going to bring this all the way through and bring this through and maybe just a little boop, boop, there you don't I mean you don't have to do that but it does help kind of define those shapes and the same thing on the side here those little vertical those little vertical highlights go a long long way right they, those little vertical highlights do a lot of work. So same thing over here. We are going to go all the way down the side and we're going to carry, we're going to carry that through a little vertical, vertical, that's close. Oops, I'm off center now. So again, using the belly of the brush very lightly. And um, this, when I'm highlighting, this paint is pretty thin. This paint is not, this paint is not really, really thick. That's how you get a nice sharp line. Um, I'm not putting much pressure on the brush at all. If I start to push on the brush to try and get a nice line, it's going to, it's going to have the paint bleed out more and end up getting a thicker line or an uneven line. So I want to use nice thin paint. So I can just very gently oof, trying to get between those two rivets and I ended up. Okay. So this, so this is probably, I overloaded the brush and it's a little too, I overloaded the brush. It's a little too thin. So that's how I got that big, thick, that kind of that, that line that was a little thicker than I wanted it to be, but that's okay. I'm not going to lose, whoops, I'm not going to lose sleep over that. And again, we're going to carry down, carry down the, the front sides here. We're not going to, we're not going to highlight anything in there. We're going to leave that alone. Coming down to the missile pods. And this is fun. This is fun to try to do. So bring it down on the missile pod. And the, these are actually little triangles on the corners. So. Like if you can, bow, you got a little triangle there. <laughs> and then there is a, there's this break right here. So now we've got a nice established. And then this edge here, this interior edge is also going to get a highlight. And that really defines that area really nicely. Again, this is all using the side of the brush, belly of the brush, because especially, uh, especially space marine vehicles, they have all these wonderful hard lines. Uh, it gets harder when, when there aren't these lines, um, these hard kind of panel, panel lines to highlight, but we will cross that bridge when we get to it. So top of the carapace here these little these little deals Ooh, that was not good highlighting so what happened on those two oof, what happened on those two is my brush was too steep i didn't have a good angle on the outside and so it just 
it, it just left, I covered too much kind of surface area, but you know, so this is, this does take, take some practice, take some touch uh, to get used to it. I'm also rushing a little bit, but so the top of the top of the sarcophagus, thank you. Finally remembered the official name for this. So the top of the sarcophagus and really you want to move your hand and you want to move the brush and you want to move the model really into the best position to get a nice angle on what you're trying to highlight. This is getting a, a little obsessive, but that's okay. I also, I'm also strange in the, in the fact that I really like edge highlighting a lot. I think it's a lot of fun. Um, it's a fun challenge and I love the effect that it gets. So the payoff for, for doing a bunch of edge highlighting, I think is really good. Um, but I'm also just, you know, a little kind of mental that way. So coming down here, we definitely want to get, we definitely want to get these lines. And if you have to, you know, oops, blocking everything. If you have to brace everything, just like we did with the eye lenses and stuff, brace everything against the table and just do a quick, short, little, so like, I know I'm going to have to do it over here. Just a quick, short, little line, and then go back to using, go back to using the side of the brush and just connect them. That way you're not trying to do a straight line on that whole, you're not trying to carry that whole distance. You're actually just doing a little piece. So it's less pressure to kind of get that line perfect kind of all the way through. Oops. There we go. Sorry, look good. And I would go back and pick out, like pick out all these rivets, right? With the, with the edge highlight color. So we go back and pick out all these rivets. So here we're going to come down the front, kind of back across the front, of course, back a little bit and down the front. And that's really it. We're not going to get all the way back in here, right? Right. But we do want to, we're going to carry this a little bit down, just, just a few millimeters down to kind of give it that corner. Actually, we will come out. We're going to come out to the corner here and just do a little bit up and a little bit down. And that way we're getting those shapes without committing to highlighting absolutely everything on the, on the bottom. So just a little bit on the top here. That's good. Then we're going to come down here. We're going to do a little bit on the top of the crotch plate, obviously the top of the knee. Ooh, that was too thick. outside here, outside there. And then we are going to come, we are going to come down the outside of the knee, but we're not going to go all the way. We're just going to go into the shadow and then leave it just like we did here. We just come a little bit down. But on the outside, since the outside is getting more light than the inside, we're going to go a little bit further than we do on the inside. And maybe a little touch here just to, just to kind of break up those two areas, but then that's really it. And then we're going to come out to the toes, do front of the toes, front of that, right? There we go. So that's kind of mangled from, <laughs> from, uh, different experiments, weathering experiments and stuff. This has been an experimental redemptor, uh, one of the easy to build ones. And, uh, if you, 
if you like Primaris Marines and you're looking for something cool to paint, uh, these easy to build redemptors are awesome. These things are so fun. Um, so the lead edge on there. And then we'll come down the side. This the side of this on the easy to build is a little funky, but if we're patient, we can get a nice highlight on that. And then we'll come down here. I'll probably just do and just a little nod. We don't want to connect these, right? We don't want to start highlighting everything all the way through. We just want there to be when you're looking at the model like this, you want to be able to have some differentiation between the metallic and that panel and the knee, but we don't want to just outline the knee, right? So we'll come up here on the shoulder and get the whole, since this, since this pad is going to be sitting horizontal, we're going to get the whole pad, the whole top of the pad rather. And then we're going to come down the front. Same on the back side. And then a little bit, and then down the front here, down the front there. We got a nice. Kind of the lead edge. Oh my gosh, way too thick. Again, didn't have a great angle too shallow so we want to always be mindful kind of the angle and this on the easy to build version is a little tough because it's not really sculpted there it's kind of smushy but we want to get on these we want to get these fingers and get those there are a couple little lines there a couple little lines here and then we're but we're just going to be highlighting I don't know what I was thinking on that one. The lead edge, right? So like that, kind of that, that, that. We're going to come down the outside. But we're not getting underneath the fist, right? We're just keeping it to like there. We will come in here and do on both sides of that plate and then this is really important this kind of thumb thumb joint here is really important but again we're not carrying these highlights back into the shadows back in the shadows back in the shadows we want to keep it we want to keep it on that lead edge right but when we get back here we are going to come down the back a little bit because that will catch some light. Same with this, even though this is in shadow, it just gives us a little more definition back there. Coming to the back, and I'm only gonna do this kind of this side because all this translates over on the other side as well. Um, and we're coming up on like an hour for this tutorial, which is fine, but um, I have other ones that I wanna, I wanna do too, so. Again, outside of the toe, outside of the toe. So we kind of get this little plate here, just the top part of it, and a little bit down the side. And then just a little, you can do a little bit on those plates there. These plates aren't as necessary. Those little vent holes aren't as necessary as like this kind of heel guard thing here. Uh, when it comes to this, this is real quick. This is just up here. So the top of those, sides of those. And then just a little, we do want to acknowledge that this goes back under there, but we're not highlighting back under there again because light's not going back there. But we do want to acknowledge, if we just did the front part, it would look a little weird. So we do want to give a nod to the fact that the top goes back, right? But we're not highlighting that. And then on this, these are easy. We just go basically all the way around, but stop, stop kind of where this panel is, 
don't go back underneath there. Um, these exhaust vents I usually do, or I always do, kind of highlight. And then straight down, straight down, those little cutouts. This, just like the Primaris backpack, same shape. And we're just going to run our brush around about a half circle on that one. And then on this one, you know, we have all those shapes there. We are going to come down the front just a little bit, just to give it a little verticality. We don't want to create artificial breaks in the shapes. So, and here we can come very lightly kind of over the top there and get that panel. But as you can see, that's a nice looking dreadnought from a lighting perspective. You know, that's looking pretty fierce. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, you know, like I said, I'll be doing another tutorial where I'm actually using colors. Um, and I'll probably use this for some weathering and um, some different tutorials, just one-off tutorials. So those have a separate entry. They're not confined to a specific um, scheme. So that'll be coming. I'll also be doing another grayscale on a Rhino here pretty soon, but I wanted to get another one of these out. These are fun to do. Um, so that is a grayscale Redemptor Dreadnought. I uh, hope you found it useful. If you have any questions, uh, you know, leave them in the comments, shoot me a message, always happy to answer them. And uh, thanks for your support. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you soon.